Hey, I am here with Mark Wade, editor in, editor in chief, Mr. Editor in chief, Mr. Editor in chief Boom Studios. Studios. Also, uh, former writer on let's see, The Flash, Captain America, Kingdom Come. Uh, current writer on Irredeemable and Incorruptible. Yep. Um, first of all, let's talk about Boom Studios a little bit. Sure. Uh, you guys, uh, well, hey, Boom Studios. In a way, I want to talk about. The, the way the industry is changing right now. Yeah. Uh, and as editor in chief, uh, how are you? How are you changing Boom Studios to kind of meet uh, the, the, the the changing uh, with with digital comics, with with the consolidation of, of Disney and Marvel, right. with, with DC doing what they're doing. Right. Uh, how how are you reacting at, at Boom Studios <laughs> with that? That's a big question. That's a big question. Um, I, I didn't prep you before. That's right. Let's take it. Let's 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 break it down. So we uh, in terms of in terms of digital, we are, we are, we hope to make an announcement in the next few weeks. We've got we've got a lot of stuff in place for that because we all realize that. And again, I'm I'm one of those guys who's going to be standing on my front porch on April 3rd when my iPad shows up, <laughs> and I you know and I'm I'm very much at the forefront of that. Uh, in terms of in terms of the Disney stuff and sort of reacting to other players in the marketplace, I think the bigger I think the overall answer is that we've been very good about pursuing. Uh, licenses and pursuing publishing opportunities that uh, that aren't being taken advantage of by other publishers. They're sure. they're really you know DC has a little bit of a kids line and there are a few other kids comics out there. But with Boom Kids, you know we landed the Disney stuff, we we landed the Pixar stuff, the Muppets, and and these are properties that everybody knows. Yeah. And they have performed incredibly well for us. That we we managed to have hit a point in the marketplace that I don't think maybe even necessarily existed five years ago where the average comic book store customer is now of an age to have kids who would be are perfect for this and I'm not sure I'm not sure that audience I'm not sure that that the comic store audience was that five or ten years ago but it is now no, you're right. And plus, the, there's an assault there where, where parents want to give that to their kids. Well, exactly. You want to share in the, It's not just that you want your kids to read, but it's also if you're a comics fan already, you want to share your hobby totally. with with your kids. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about, say, The Muppet Show, which I, I think uh, after the announcement of you as, as EIC, yeah. that was one of the biggest things that yeah. blew up. Yeah. That, that was uh, you know, part of the fun. That, that, that got to be... You know, it was selling out here and there. It was selling out everywhere. Yep. And you know, how do you choose? How do you choose a writer for for a Muppet Show and one that can that can get the the feel of the Muppet Show so well? Uh, I think in this case, you go to the guy who has been wanting to do it since he was a kid, and that's Roger Langridge, who is a writer artist, who is a Brit, who is phenomenal. He was doing. Muppets material for the the Disney uh, Disney magazine oh, uh, okay. back when it was on the okay. newsstands and uh, the, the Digest magazine and we knew at that point that he had it. I mean, it was so clear that he was the right guy. So we pursued him about the opportunity. Can we can we use some of your material in our stuff? Can we you know can we pay you to reprint some of this material in 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 our stuff? And he's like, yes. But do you want new material because it's something I wanted? To we so we made heaven and earth. You know, we moved heaven and earth to make that happen. And it's it was a good call. But I mean, he's he's been great with this book. But we've you know we've got uh, Amy Meberson and we've got Grace Randolph and we've got a lot of other fine people who have been doing the Muppet oh, yeah. stuff as well. So it's a, even even uh, Roger knows he can't get enough time and energy to do it all, but uh, but of the stuff that we publish, I, I, I am as proud of the Muppets book as anything else we do. And there's a lot to be proud of there. Yeah. There is. Um, other other EIC kind of thoughts, yeah. and this is, this is more of a thought experiment. You, uh, when the when the Captain America Tea Party thing came out, yeah. you were very vocal yeah. about, and, and, and yeah. rightfully so, yeah. about being ashamed of the industry in that, yeah. in, uh, and you, you know, you're very clear that it wasn't against writers and artists, it was against the, no, the industry. It, exactly. But, and I don't know if you can answer this. Yeah. Oh, as editor in chief, yeah, yeah. how would you have responded to it? Here's the thing. Well, wait. wait. As editor, rephrase. If, okay. If, if a similar situation were to happen to Boom, right? If the Tea Party came after us, if Fox yeah. News came after us, yes. go screw yourselves. Thank you. That's a, that's Thank you. that would have been my that would have been my attitude. Yeah. I just not because look. 
not because I don't think that, this is not to say that if you're a conservative and you're reading our comics, that we don't value your your, your Certain. Uh, patronage, that we that we respect you. I, the line on me has quickly become, unfortunately, that Mark Waite hates conservatives, and that's nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah. Um, I, a lot of my best friends are politically conservative people, and a lot of my friends are liberal people, and that's fine. I am clearly a knee-jerk liberal guy myself, <laughs> but that doesn't make you a bad guy in my eyes if you're Certainly. not. It is, but the fringe element of, of any movement, be it liberal or conservative, should never push its way into the public dialogue to the point where it becomes the focus of everything. They are the they are the fringe element. Certainly, you know, the, and the Tea Party in particular is is so clearly funded and you know at least partially funded and absolutely radicalized by Fox News. Certainly, certainly Fox News. Yeah. So that it's not, you know, it, it's not a real grassroots political movement. It's it's I. Oh, it's astroturf. I, it's you know, astroturf, and it's and it's really I think it's. I think the thing that amazes me about the about the uh, the rat, and again, I don't want to say anybody who thinks that the Tea Party has a good idea is evil. I'm not saying that at all. No, I think I think not. I'm saying I'm talking about I'm talking about the people who would lose their minds over the idea that a Captain America comic book made one tiny comment about them, which was misinterpreted anyway. Yeah. Are you that sensitive, really? Yes. Oh yeah. my! Oh my! Captain America comic book made fun of me. <laughs> oh no! I mean, I'm going to fold up and die. <laughs> and even then, a Captain America comic didn't make fun of them. And even then, it wasn't. It's, again, but it but it became. It was a slow news day, and it became. Oh look, Marvel comics and Captain America hate conservatives. Which, again, nothing could be further from the and, truth. And, and and the fact that no one was really willing to really stand up and tell that, I guess, yeah. is what your frustration was from. I'm just frustrated by the fact. That I understand as a corporate entity uh, that that you know, you you kind of have to play nice with everybody. I you know, and I and I suppose there will be a point at which boom be gets big enough where we have to be that sort of play nice with everybody but at this stage you know I just if they'd come after us like that I wouldn't have picked a fight but at the same time I don't I don't understand why I don't understand why we should have to apologize yeah. it's 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 not like it's not like it's like anybody uh, ah, yeah <laughs> I understand we'll, we'll yeah. move on uh, we're in Seattle and uh, that's where Fanagraphics is right now and you worked for Fanagraphics when you were doing uh, editor editing and writing for Amazing Heroes. I was. You can still see the scars if you want to look like it's, you know, <laughs> nice. no, it was, no it, was a, it was a good gig for the, you know, for the time it lasted, yeah. How did how did that uh, prep you for doing uh, writing? Did you make a lot of good contacts doing that when you, yeah. when you, so when you, you broke in? Yeah. Or did you, you know, or obviously Ladies getting to, getting an inside look into the writing process for Well, for it was, I made a lot of good con, although that wasn't the goal, but because I didn't really want to be a comics creator at that point. But I, but I, I made a lot of good contacts. Not, it wasn't the best way to make contacts because at the time when the Comics Journal was still a, a, a major force in the comics industry in terms of its gossip and in terms of its interviews and stuff, um, Fanagraphics was as reviled as it was loved by the industry back then. Sure. Um, back then, it was sort of like, you know, the Comics Journal and Fanagraphics was sort of the Rich Johnston of its day in terms of the divisiveness of opinions about it. So if you were an editor at Fanagraphics, it was just as likely if you would call, you know, you call up a, prof a professional and they would go, oh, hey, how you doing? It, it just it's likely for them to pick up the phone and go, wait, you work for Fanagraphics? Screw you, get lost, and hang up. <laughs> so those days are, are long gone. And and uh, and I was really only there for about, I mean, I did a lot of freelance work for them, but I was only on staff for about six months or so. Really? Uh, but it but it, it felt like a lifetime. No, I mean, it, it was good. It was, it was. It, Where were they located by the, when, you, when you were working? They were in Thousand Oaks. They were in Thousand Oaks, California. Oh, they were in California, okay, okay. Okay. 